our discussion of the analysis of variance by just doing a quick example, just running through an example of how the analysis of variance works. Now, the logic of the analysis of variance is just a, comp a direct carryover from the logic of uh, a t-test, and I'll show you how that works here. Uh, I'm going to click and get this going here. The point with an analysis of variance is that we want to compare two more than two means at once. Now, you can definitely use an analysis of variance for just two means, and a lot of people do in their research, but it's not necessary to use it because you can just use a t-test for that, right? Well, an, an analysis of variance can be used for uh, three, four, five, twelve, however many means you want, but we almost never use it for more than a, a, approximately a handful. Anything beyond that starts to seem kind of pointless. It starts to seem pretty cumbersome and weird, and, and the stats become kind of unsatisfying, even though technically they're, they're just fine. Just anything more than two means you need analysis of variance. You, you can't use a t-test for that. You use lots of t-tests, but we'll talk about that in the second or third lecture here. So let's do a quick overview of how this works. So before we dive into this, I want to make clear a point, and this is the mental flip. This is the new... Uh, insight that you need to understand before you can accurately do analysis of variance. You need to understand that variability and difference are essentially the same thing. They're different ways of measuring the same thing. Variability is just differences, right? Because the, the standard deviation, the variance, those formulas, the, the core of them is just the differences between each score and the mean of that score. And the mean of that score comes from the scores, so it's just a different way of measuring like the overall not quite average, but kind of the, the average differences between all the different values, that, that's kind of what it's measuring there. So any difference between any numbers can be expressed as variability, even if there are only two numbers. So as an example, let's look at this here. We've got worms. Um, you've got worm A, three centimeters long, worm B, nine centimeters long. The mean of that is six. The mean of three and nine is six, uh, the average there. Uh, add up 3 and 9 divided by 2. So we can take the deviations of those things from their mean, of those numbers from their mean, and square them. So for the 3 centimeter worm, we take 3 minus the mean, which is 6. We square that. Negative 3 squared is 9. And for the 9 centimeter wor worm, you get a positive 3, and you square that, and that's 9. Now with two numbers, it will always work out like this. One of the deviations will be negative, and the other will be positive, and they'll be the same size. Not that that's important, but it's kind of a neat little thing to remember if you're into that sort of thing. So the variance of that is 9, and the square, and the square root of 9 is going to be the standard deviation. So the standard deviation here is 3. So this is how it works when you have two, two numbers. So you can do that with two numbers, three numbers, ten numbers, anything except just one. So difference and variability are essentially this, the same thing, and that's the big insight that's going to help you understand what's going on with analysis of variance. We're flipping back and forth between difference and variability. We're using variability to tell us about differences. Now there's two kinds of variability we're interested in. One is within groups variability. And we measure variability with things like the interquartile range, the standard deviation, the variance. Those are all measures of spread or variability. And from here on out, they are actually more important to us than the measures of center, like the mean and the, and the median and things like that. The measures of variability, I mean, you can't get rid of the measures of center. We need them both. But statistics has been called the study of variability or the study of variance. Um, and that's, that's critical. Statistics is all about the variance, all about the variability. Everything is about variability. So if you're thinking to yourself, I'm just going to avoid that va a variability business. I never quite got it. It doesn't make sense to me. You've got to get over that. You've got to go back and study that, and make sure you understand what a standard deviation is and understand what a variance is, because that's what we're going to do for the rest of the semester. Now, let's say we have three groups of worms. We have L, M, and H. L for low acidity, M for medium acidity, H for high acidity. I had a lot of imagination when I named these groups, you can tell. And I made up some numbers so that I can demonstrate this. Let's say that the worms in the low acidity soil, they grow pretty big. You've got a 12 centimeter, 11 centimeter, 13, 12, 14, and 10 centimeter worms. So two of them are 12, that's okay. You can have two worms that are the same size, that's fine. From the medium uh, acidity soil group, we have an 8, a 9, a 10, 11, a 9, and a 10 centimeter worm. Now you notice from 
uh, here at this point it's not really important that we put things in order we just kind of throw them there if you want to be all tidy you could put things in order but it's going to get confusing pretty soon as to which order that means because we'll have multiple variables and so ordering things doesn't always help very much so we're just throwing them in there and group H, you can see they're much shorter, 5, 4, 5, 6, 3 centimeters, 4 centimeters. I made them all different to demonstrate this point. So we can graph these like this on, on three box plots, horizontal box plots. You can see that then I made these symmetrical just to make life simpler. And so the mean and the median are essentially the same in all of these. So these box plots, even though that's the median, that's, that's the mean too. I believe numerically it's the mean. It might be, yeah, I believe it's numerically the mean in all cases. In some cases you see you have two numbers right on top of each other. But anyway, the green dots are the individual observations sometimes stacked on each other, and then you've got the box plot there. No outliers or anything, everything's symmetrical. It's a nice, neat data set, even though it's got a very small N. So, group L, you've got a mean of 12, so the low acidity, so your mean right here is 12, and you've got a standard deviation of 1.41. Group M, you've got a mean of 9.5, and a standard deviation of 1.05. That's the evil cat. Hey, Dexter. Evil little boy. I love him so much. And then group um, H is the high acidity mean. You've got a mean of 4.5, and then you've got a standard deviation of 1.05. So all the standard deviations are pretty close, except group L has a bigger standard deviation than the others. So we can put a red line for the mean, and I can see I didn't quite put it in the center. The joys of PowerPoint. And I can do these blue little bar and error bar type lines going one standard deviation up and one standard deviation down from the mean. I tried to make it about as precise as possible using PowerPoint. So we've got the mean here and the standard deviation and the mean here and the standard deviation. So for analysis of variance we're interested in comparing the, the variability within groups to the variability between groups. So let's talk about within groups first. Here we've just got the variability represented, represented as standard deviation. In the math we'll use variance instead, but it's pretty hard to represent variance on just a little two-dimensional plot like this. Variance is a squared thing, it's kind of abstract and strange. It's good for the math, it's hard for graphing. So I'm going to use standard deviations instead. So I've got these blue lines that go one standard deviation above and below the mean of each group. So let's just look only at the standard deviations, and that's the variability. That's our estimate of the variability of each group. Now we can just compare these things directly to each other, just how big is the variability in each group. And then we can calculate the average variability. Okay, now it looks like a big blue H or a big blue ladder, but the point is that uh, the distance from here to here, you know, not quite as big as this, but not quite as small as this, that's the average, that's the mean variability. So the average standard deviation, if you just average those, oops, sorry, that's the wrong number, it's not 1.72 and 2.37. It's 1.04, 1.41, but two 1.04s, right? The average standard deviation is 1.17 centimeters. That's how much the worm length varies within groups on average. So we have three groups. We took each of their variability measured in standard deviations. And then we just took the average of all three standard deviations. That's the average uh, variability within groups. So that's what that looks like right there. Now, we can do something else we can look at just the means, and this is where the mental flip comes. We're used to thinking of differences between means. How many centimeters difference between group L and H, or between H and M? But instead, let's talk about the variability among the means, which is essentially the same. It's a way of using a single number to represent a bunch of differences, and that's the beauty of ANOVA. So we can use one number to represent a bunch of differences between a whole bunch of different means. So we can just pretend like the individual group means are just single numbers by themselves. So one number is 12, one number is 9.5, and one is 4.5. These are the means of the three groups, but we can just forget about groups for a minute and pretend that those are just individual observations. And then we can calculate the standard deviation of those observations. The standard deviation is 3.82, so the mean ends up being somewhere in here, and you go 3.82 down and 3.82 up, and it's about like this. That's that gigantic stretched out H error bar thing. So that's the standard deviation. Um, that's the standard deviation representing the variability between the means of the groups. So we have two things. We have the average variability within the groups, 
which is about that big, and the average, and the variability between the group means taken as if they were just single individual observations. So which is bigger? Obviously the red one, right? But what does that mean? What that means is that the variability between the means is much bigger than the variability within the groups. So you can think of that, that the groups are relatively tightly clustered within themselves, but they are separated from each other a lot. Or you can think there's not much overlap between the groups as far as their values go. It, but the conclusion from an, an analysis of variance of this would be, we conclude that the means in the population are not all the same. So this is all still about samples, what we've got here, but with analysis of variance, we're going to make some inference to the population and say, based on the extreme amount of variability between the means in our sample compared to not very much variability within the groups in our sample, we conclude that the same thing is going on in the population, that there's a lot of variability between means in the population and not very much variability within each of the groups that these samples came from, of the populations these samples came from. So these samples all came from different populations. So there is variability between the means. There is difference between the means and the population. So that's how ANOVA works. You've got to compare the means to each other by using uh, the variance or the variability between the group means. And then you've got to kind of keep yourself checked with a reality check of saying, what's the variability within the groups?